Okay, we're, uh, we're going to deal with the word hybrid, and I'm going to just get this out of a, a dictionary reference of Webster's so we can uh, uh, just know what we're dealing with. There's uh, an interesting thing we found in the Canadian Law Dictionary, and I've got an excerpt out of it that we'll use here, even though I have my Canadian Law Dictionary off the camera, but we're just going to use this as a copy for now. You have an opportunity to go in there and find it for yourself, and that was, I believe, the third okay. edition? That's correct. Okay, so hybrid, because most people don't even know what that word means. We, we, you know, we talk about it sometimes in, in intermingling uh, two different things together somehow, but I think if you can take it into reference of your Christian name or the given name and then mixing it with something it's not supposed to be attached to under a merger or confusion, that would be considered a hybrid. Because if they don't belong together and you put them together, it's like putting God with Satan, they don't belong. It's like putting good with evil, it does not belong. And therefore, when we have that uh, situation, uh, we have to look at the word, because if we don't know what the word means, then we're just walking around aimlessly, uh, babbling on. A uh, good babble on is what the English language is all about. The word hybrid... Get the spot. Okay, hybrid. It says offspring of mixed parentage. The offspring produced by crossing two individuals of unlike genetic constitution. Do you realize that the statement of birth is something that is constituted? The constitution sits there, but there's two things going on there. There's the seed of the woman in Genesis and also the seed of the serpent. One draws out. That's what serpent meant, to draw out, has the word pen in it also. They're telling you in code, that's why the English language to an extent has an importance, because if you see the words within the words, you'll have a better understanding. So we do a lot of cursive writing and drawing out on the statement of birth, uh, which leads through many things. The parents fill that out, and then we eventually become those that draw out also, making images of things. Uh, involved in cursive writing, signing, which you know the word sign has no use of the word of the letter G in it, which is giving you an indication it's a sin. So therefore, uh, uh, we get involved in things that we may not understand, but it's, it's involved in the word. The word hybrid, uh, not only just taking in two individuals of unlike genetic constitution, it, uh, it goes further and says, uh, anything of mixed origin. Well, we know there would be an origin probably of the surname, the Gentile name. It's got to have an origin somewhere. And there would be an origin of the given name, which is Christian. We know that originates with God. That's a God-given name. The surname is like something supposedly put forth as an equal value for those that choose not to believe in Christ. Because you can't make everybody believe in Christ. So certainly in our society, there would be an optional name to, to use if we wanted to be involved in something that has nothing to do with the profession that we have as being given a gift, a present a present, and we were pre-sent the name, the Christian name, ahead of time. And therefore, the parents gave this to us beforehand as a God-given gift through Christ, and the surname being an overhead for those that want to take on a burden, those that did not believe. The uh, Anything mixed, of mixed origin, just remember that, and the Christian name is defined in law as an original name. Webster's 1828 uh, talks about the Christian name as an original name. Then we have a name added to that. Generally what you'll find the name added to it is additional, but it's really been merged, but at the same time, it, one really becomes the other. It's like it's exchanged. And therefore, you're taking the surname in exchange of your Christian name because they don't see the other in law. And you'll notice on most any court documents or anything you've ever seen uh, served you, you'll find that generally the surname is the thing that they're after. They're referring to you as Mr. Smith, Mr. Taylor. They're not referring to you um, in the individual name because in the army you have no rights. You have no individual rights. All rights are gone. So um, we came across, a, by coincidence, <laughs> the term hybrid in the Canadian Law Dictionary. And this one kind of seemed a little disturbing because I had seen a lot of things before doing research, but uh, this one concerned me. I said, well, if we took the seed of the woman and we had the seed of the serpent, 
And we really try to mix those together, even though they can't be mixed. And according to law, you can't even put your given name uh, to be transferred to anybody because it belongs to you uh, as a gift if you believe in Christ and walk with him. And therefore, Christ is your backer, your surety with that name. The problem with the putting the two together, you create a hybrid. That's a merger of two things that don't belong, two separate origins. One of evil, one of good. It's like the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We make all things, of course, in our world under hypothecation under paper. And therefore, uh, we can understand that uh, this could be actually the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We take the two together and we merge them. We get a hybrid, and the word hybrid in the Canadian Law Dictionary seemed to have a very disturbing definition that I would never have got out of a regular dictionary. But this is how it appears on the surface. The government, for those that are participants, have defined this word. Hybrid is a noun, a human ovum that has been fertilized by a sperm of a non-human life form. An ovum of a non-human life form that has been fertilized by a human sperm. A human ovum into which the nucleus of a cell of a non-human life form has been introduced. An ovum of a non-human life form into which the nucleus of a human cell has been introduced. Or a human ovum or an ovum of a non-human life form that otherwise contains haploid sets of chromosomes from both a human being and a non-human life form. I would be a little concerned here that we're talking about merging something uh, that appears to be human with non-human and putting the two together, whether it's sperm or ovum. Now, I want to understand uh, that most people don't understand the word human means in the color of a man. You could only do this type of experimentation with the consent of people who are humans. And do not think that a human is a man or a woman. Because that's in the color of a man, and it also uh, was more used towards something demoralizing or something as a beast that would, because man that sinned became a human in reality, in the law, and therefore would die like a beast. So they're treating it like a beast, and now they're going to start using something that is uh, certainly of an animal form to mix it in with you. Maybe Satan's got some chuckle going on that he thinks he's going to create some kind of hybrid survivor to the curse of the law that God was going to bring about upon those that do not exercise their faith in Jesus Christ. So we have a major problem going on. This would be almost like back in the days of Noah with the Nephilim. And I'm sure that if anybody's ever gone through researching Nephilim on any websites, you're going to find some very interesting videos and skeletons and things that would certainly defy the stupidity that is involved in the evolution theory because that's certainly not brought up by the scientists. But of course, um, you know, you're, you're dealing with... Uh, uh, the same individuals, these same scientists are out there, of course, receiving prime rates as a primate um, in the banking world. So uh, they're not any more intelligent, so don't look to them for any intelligence. And therefore, um, our, our whole situation is based on a blindness, uh, which happens uh, when people do self-abuse. Um, we call, you know, to an extent, people who never agree on anything as master debaters, but they're really master baiters. And therefore, they go blind, as the Catholic Church said, and they can't see because they're stroking their pen all the time. So we've got a situation here where you have to go and take your time to look at the law, look at the words, find out what it is, and, and stop wasting your time um, in, a, in a world uh, that has enough blind already. There are solutions for people who exercise their faith in truth, not in falsehood. You could decide and choose and accept the gift of Jesus Christ, which makes you part of the holiest arrangement under the Father, the original Creator, or you can be part of the Creator, the false Father, the Father of the lie, which occurs with those that take on a false surety under the world that is godless. I hope that you make the right choice.